Hello and welcome to our first Nomad CT research webinar of 2021. I'm Susie Roy, the Customer Relations Manager for the Americas and Research Engagement Lead at Snowman International, and of course, your host for the Snowman CT research webinars. Um, you'll notice that everyone is currently muted, um, but if you have any questions as we go along, please enter your question into the Q&A box. We do have a Q&A portion at the end of today's presentation. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and both these slides and the video will be made available later this week. As many of you know, our SNOMED CT web series have become immensely popular monthly events. Um, what you might not know is that in addition to this research webinar, we also have a clinical track and an implementation track. These other webinars focus a little bit more on the clinical implementation of SNOMED CT, but um, all of these webinars are always free of charge. You do just need to register to attend live um, or watch the recordings, um, but you can go to snomed.org web series to see any of our upcoming presentations for any of these research, uh, any of these webinars. But of course, you all know that I am impartial to the awesome SNOMED CT research webinars. Um, in our research webinar, we, of course, are more experimental, where we showcase new and exciting innovative research, both on and with SNOMED CT. Um, if you want to stay informed of upcoming research webinars, you can either watch that SNOMED uh, web series webpage, or you can also sign up for the SNOMED CT research reference group. This is where I post information about upcoming research related news. And to join, all you have to do is just email me, sro at snomed.org, and I will get you on that list. And just to pique your interest for next month, um, Dr. Christian Lovis and Dr. Chris Fay got it. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I killed that. I'm going to have to know how to pr uh, pronounce that for next month. Um, they will be presenting at our February SNOMED CT research webinar. The title and the summary uh, for that February, February uh, webinar is forthcoming, but please go ahead and save the date and time. Um, and of course, if you are part of the SNOMED CT research reference group, you'll be the first to know when registration opens up. And one final little plug, um, did you know that we have a SNOMED International YouTube channel? Uh, so many of you know that we held our 2020 annual SNOMED CT Expo virtually this year and everyone was invited. Um, I know that there were a lot of presentations and um, some of them were coinciding, so I wasn't able to visit all of them. And also there are a few that I just want to visit again. So now you can um, go and uh, view any of those presentations by going to our YouTube page. You'll also see other videos uh, such as our SNOMED CT value series and um, of course all of our monthly webinars. Um, and again, I'm impartial to our research webinars, but you can go and um, view our videos on our YouTube channel and um, enjoy them there. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop speaking in just a minute, but I wanted to introduce today's presenters. I'm honored to um, present Dr. Renee Schmidt, a university, uh, she is a university reader at the Department of Computer Science at the University of Manchester and leads the Formal Methods Research Group. Her research involves the automation and theoretical analysis of reasoning methodologies of logic relevant to a variety of areas in computer science and artificial intelligence. The focus of her work, uh, current work, is on the development of tools for ontology reengineering, including ontology extraction and information hiding, query answering, and automated prover generation. Warren Del Pinto is a research associate in the Department of Computer Science at the University of Manchester, undertaking a second mint between the university and SNOMED International. His PhD research focuses on hypothesis generation and knowledge bases via abductive reasoning, and his current research interests include developing efficient models for definition and hypothesis generation and ontologies, and the integration of knowledge driven reasoning and data-driven learning. And last but not least, Dr. Yongshin Gao is a senior 
Senior Terminologist at Snowmed International and the co-chair of Modeling Advisory Group with a focus on concept model development and integration with information models for interoperability. He has over 10 years of extensive experience in terminology authoring, quality assurance, and release. And he takes part in the development and review of international health informatics standards. Today, our esteemed colleagues will be presenting just the right amount of CT content, instruction, and sharing. And with that, I'll hand the screen over to you, Warren. Thanks. So I'll just share the slides now. I should be sharing this one, I believe. Okay. And then I will uh, hand over to you, Renata, to give the introduction. Thank you very much, uh, Susie, for that introduction. Um, my internet connection is uh, slightly unstable, unfortunately, so I do apologize in advance if there is a cutout. Um, yes, my name is Renato Schmidt. I'm a university lecturer at the University of uh, Manchester. Uh, thank you to everybody uh, for coming. It is uh, very humbling to see that so many of you have set a time aside uh, time to attend this uh, webinar, wherever you are in the world and whatever time of day it is uh, where you are. It is a really huge honor for us to give this uh, SNOMETCH re research webinar presentation uh, today. Um, we are very fortunate to have been working with uh, Yongshen Gao on some previous joint projects which have led to our current project on which today in this presentation we want to report the progress. For us, this is a useful opportunity to step back, take stock, and most importantly, make everybody in the SNOMED community aware of what we are trying to achieve in the project and receive your comments and uh, suggestions. As the title says, the aim of the project is to develop software to provide automated support for content extraction and uh, sharing for SNOMED CT in order to make it easier to reuse content and assist with uh, tasks of uh, content uh, development. Uh, the plan for this talk is as uh, follows. After a brief introduction and uh, setting the scene by myself, Warren Del Pinto, who is doing most of the work, is going to tell us about the project and the progress uh, so far. Yong will then elaborate uh, on the possible applications and the value of this work, and he'll finish off with a bit of an outlook and uh, conclusion. Um, the next slide is a little bit uh, about ourselves. Uh, this information was uh, covered by Susie's uh, very kind uh, introduction, so uh, I'll skip this in the interest of time. So um, let me start by giving a bit of background on the research in my team at the University of uh, Manchester. Uh, broadly, our research is centered on automated reasoning and uh, knowledge representation. Among the projects that we are currently undertaking is uh, in this broad area is the development uh, and application of uh, ontology extraction, which is what this presentation is about semantic difference computation and uh, tracking changes in ontologies involves a collaboration with Nanjing University in uh, China. This is uh, somewhat relevant to, uh, to the project. Um, abduction, uh, like Susie said, um, is something that uh, Warren's PhD uh, uh, project has focused on. Abduction is the process of extending an ontology to explain new observations. Um, he's had uh, excellent uh, achievements. Um, he solved the knowledge-based abduction problem for uh, expressive uh, description logics, which is the hardest of the different abduction problems for description logics. I have a few other PhD students undertaking projects in the area of uh, multi-agent systems, um, knowledge sharing between uh, agents and agent communication. We are also interested in query rewriting and query answering for ontology-based uh, languages. Um, query answering is all about uh, data extraction relative to uh, some background knowledge specified in an ontology. What unites all these projects is the investigation and development of new reasoning methodologies for different application areas. Uh, now, a little bit about our previous work specific to SNOMED CT. 
Our collaboration with Yong started in 2018 on an informal basis. We were fortunate to get a small amount of funding as part of the Impact Acceleration Award funding scheme of the UK EPSRC. This scheme is quite unique in that it provides institutions with funding to support knowledge transfer of academic research to industry. So this project was uh, about uh, ontology abstraction, uh, uh, um, ontology extraction. Um, there's a big interest uh, in this uh, topic in the literature and a number of ontology extraction approaches have been developed. Um, this was a proof of concept project in which we explored the application of uh, some of these um, tools, particularly those based on modularity and uh, forgetting um, to SNOMED CT. We found modularization and forgetting tools enhance each other when they are combined. So in this uh, project, we presented um, interesting uh, results in a new workflow. And uh, these results were uh, presented at the Expo in Kuala Lumpur and the KCAP conference in California. Um, the details of the publications are there at the bottom of the slide. So the outcome was a feasible way to use our tools to compute uh, sub-ontologies. Uh, we managed to significantly improve the performance and the success rates of our tools. Um, and uh, um, it really interesting outcomes. This is all wonderful and important, but our ontology extraction tools are designed for uh, more expressive languages, which means the sub-ontologies computed with this approach will contain language constructs outside the language of uh, SNOMED CT. Additionally, the tools do not all support some of the new EL language features, so the evaluation of the project was limited to the 2017 version of SNOMED CT. Um, so to be useful to SNOMED, um, of course, the sub-ontologies generated must be in the language of SNOMED CT and must satisfy the modeling guidelines uh, of uh, SNOMED. So uh, while in this project we achieved the goal of the project, um, uh, it became clear to us uh, that in order for this to be beneficial to SNOMED uh, CT users, uh, what we would need to do is to do something different and something more bespoke. So we started working on uh, a new approach for computing sub-ontologies that is uh, definition driven and applied for funding to pursue these ideas in a new uh, project. Um, this application was uh, successful and this led to the current project. Um, we can move to the next slide. Uh, Please, thank you. Uh, the project started in July last year. So I should uh, thank uh, the sponsors um, at this point, the UK APSSC, the Department of Computer Science at the University of Manchester, and uh, most importantly, uh, Snowman International. Um, this time we got funding for 12 months. So uh, this means we are at the halfway point of the project. Um, formally, the project is a secondment of uh, Warren from the University of Manchester to uh, Snowman International. So um, uh, we have Warren who works uh, full time on the project. Um, the project lead at uh, Snowman International is uh, uh, Yongsheng Gao. Um, also part of the working group is Garda Al, -Al Gamdi, who is um, a PhD student at the University of uh, Manchester. And we have uh, Kai Cooley, who is a uh, technical architect at Snowman International. We also have a, a steering group. Um, we're very fortunate to have Rory Davidson, Jim Case, and Monica Harry as members uh, in the steering group. They are providing valuable uh, input and support, which we are very grateful for. So uh, what is this project uh, all about? Uh, the title uh, says it, just the right amount. SNOMED CT content extraction and uh, sharing. And Warren will now tell us about uh, the aims of the project and the progress so far. Thanks, Renata. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, hi, my name is Warren. I'll be uh, giving the middle portion of the current work. So uh, yeah, as mentioned, the title gives a hint as to what the, the main aims of the project are. And these can be split into two parts. So we have content extraction and we have sharing. 
the uh, talk here will focus on the first of those two, so the content extraction part, which is where the progress so far has been made. Um, and the sharing part is something that is ongoing work uh, that we're investigating. So for content extraction, the idea is uh, we want to preserve the meaning of a collection of entities um, within the Sonoma CT terminology. So these entities should scope a domain of interest for a given application, and you want to take a part of the terminology without needing it all. Um, then you'll want the semantics of these entities to be clear between the extracted information, so the subontology and the source ontology. So they should share a similar structure and have the same meaning. The structure of the information should be concise. So the result we produce should contain only the information we need while preserving all the meaning re related to the domain. And they should be customizable. So the, the extracts or subontologies we produce should be controllable in terms of the size of them, aka the scope of the content they cover. And also they should be um, changeable. So you should be able to modify the scope of the subontology um, if additional information is needed. So this should be a very flexible um, part of the solution. The sharing part is to do with the integration of subontologies with different sources. So this includes the semantics of the subontology when it's extracted and any changes that a user decides to make to the subontology content. So it should be possible to specify a source from which you extract the subontology and a target for which you can then propagate the changes or content you have already extracted to a given target uh, ontology. So to give a brief overview of Sonoma CT, as I'm sure we're all familiar with, it's one of the most comprehensive clinical terminologies in the world, uh, containing a wide array of clinical information organized into various hierarchies, which you can see on the right-hand side there in the browser. And there's modules for different domains, including core content, national and member extensions. So these include uh, different countries' content, the UK, Australia, US, et cetera. And the size of Sonoma CT as of the July release is on the slide there. Um, it's a very large terminology, um, but the question here is, how can we focus on specific content? So for many users, it may be the case that they work in a specialist domain and they may have a specific application in mind. So not all of the information in the terminology will be needed for every single use case. And different applications will require different levels of detail from each of the different domains represented in Sonoma CT. And the information may come from different sources, as, as mentioned, different countries' extensions, and so on. So for example, if we had a, uh, a dentistry application, it may be the case that uh, a dentist may want to extract the information from Sonoma CT that is relevant only to their application. They may not necessarily want to see all the information about, for example, renal diseases or medicinal products that aren't used in their, in their particular domain. So they may want to focus in on this dentistry content. For some applications, uh, one of the tools that already exists are ref sets. So ref sets are a useful tool when focusing on subsets of Sonoma CT, um, and they provide a customizable list of the entities related to a given domain of interest. And they're already used in many applications to do with Sonoma CT and form an essential part of using the terminology in practice. So for example, if you wish to link the correct Sonoma CT concepts to electronic forms and uh, electronic systems, then you'll often use a ref set uh, or almost always use a ref set to specify the entities that you need. The task we have here though is, is, is a different task. So the question here is what about the semantics of the information? So for many applications, we need something different. If we want the extracted content, so the domain of interest and the entities associated with that domain um, to be in the form of a standalone ontology, then we need to ensure that the meaning of the entities is captured um, in the same way that the meaning is captured in Sonoma GT. And this is using the powerful semantics provided by description logics. So extracted content um, should preserve these semantics for it to be a standalone ontology. And we must be able to compute meaningful definitions of the entities in the domain. So these should be meaningful to users when they're, being, when they're using the subontologies, and they shouldn't lose focus of what's truly needed to capture that domain. So it should be focused on what the user really wants to see rather than a scope of, of too much information um, outside what they requested. And these are the guiding principles of the content extraction um, part of subontology extraction. So why is this in general important? So why do we need to extract um, standalone subontologies uh, with these semantics? Well, one is understanding. So um, for the domain experts using the terminology, um, the modeling will likely be a lot clearer to them if they have a set of entities um, using terms relevant and familiar to the domain of interest. 
So they don't need to understand the modeling or, or see it all at once, the modeling of the entire terminology. It should be the case that they can focus in on the modeling relevant to them. So retaining the meaning of the important terms with respect to the source ontology, with respect to SNOMED CT, um, is an important part of being able to understand a subdomain. In distributing content, uh, users can gather content related to their own application, including full definitions and relationships for the entities that scope their domain. And the subontology should be producible regardless of the source. So it should be possible to take content, for example, from the UK edition, uh, specify some content from their computer subontology, and then utilize this information in a application in, in another uh, another domain. And this could be another in another member country, for example. And regardless of this, the same meaning should be maintained with respect to the source ontology. All of this should assist with debugging and updating. So the idea of this is that these concise extracts or subontologies uh, relating to specific domains are easier for the users to, uh, to examine, to debug, and to update. So there's no need to try to home in on um, an, a modeling issue or a, an update that needs to be made in a sea of content um, to do with other, other domains. You know that the issues you're facing will be within the uh, domain scope by the subontology. And this increased understanding leads to faster improvement of, uh, of concept modeling. And the updates that are made in these subontologies, as we mentioned at the sharing portion, um, should be propagated to target ontologies. So it should be possible for users to take the updates they make there and make these usable in the target ontology, rather than having to repeat the process or discard the changes. So as an overview of uh, the approach we take to subontology extraction, we focus on an input in the form of a source ontology. So in the majority of cases here, this will be SNOMED CT. Um, or one of the additions of, and a set of focus concepts or classes. And these focus concepts are what we really mean by the, the scope of the domain of interest. They're the entities that the user really wants to preserve the full meaning of. And the output in the end should be a uh, full set of definitions for these focus concepts. So they should be fully semantically uh, represented and captured in the subontology via the use of meaningful definitions. And these definitions will make use of what we call supporting concepts and attributes. So the supporting concepts are those that are needed to define the meaning relevant to the focus concepts. And making this delineation between focus concepts and supporting concepts gives us guiding principles for producing a standalone subontology, not only in our format, which is where the uh, semantics and definitions uh, are really computed and represented, but also in, in RF2 format, which is the representation um, that users will often be familiar with when using SNOMED CT content. Um, so in applications, this is the format that many people will be, will be using. So definitions, I've mentioned those several times now. So what do we mean by those? Well, we have the authoring form. Uh, for those of you familiar with the browser, this will be the stated view in SNOMED CT's browser. And the authoring form, if we look at the top left, we have renal impairment. And this is a uh, named concept uh, that is being defined by what is on the bottom right. So an authoring form definition collects all of the closest um, parent primitives, the primitive concepts like disease. And these are entities that aren't otherwise equivalently defined in the terminology. And all of the non-redundant attribute value relationships. So for example, finding site kidney structure. And the idea of the authoring form is it gives a standardized, concise way to represent the meaning of this named, uh, named concept um, without too much unnecessary information. So it's concise and semantically um, full in a sense. Another form that is relevant to what we're doing is the necessary normal form. And for those of you familiar with the browser, this is the inferred view in the SNOMED CT browser. Um, the same concept being shown here. Uh, the main difference here being that instead of the closest primitives, we use the closest uh, named classes. So these are the truly closest parent relationships to the, to the class at hand with all of the non-redundant attribute value relationships also. So these two forms of definition are fundamental to uh, the semantics of SNOMED CT. Uh, obviously content can be represented in different forms, but these are two standardized forms uh, that we'll be looking at. So what progress have we made towards computing these? So for the overall subontology extraction task, we need to be able to compute these definitions with respect to focus and supporting classes. So we developed a new approach to efficiently generating these forms uh, over the SNOMED CT uh, terminology. And the key features of this new approach are that it supports the full expressive language features of the OWL EL profile used in SNOMED CT. So these include uh, the features such as property axioms, so um, one property being a subtype of another, reflexivity, uh, property chains, and so on. 
and also includes things like GCI axioms, which some of you may have seen in some CT being used to represent uh, notions of disjunction or disjunctive concepts. Um, so it supports a wide range of, the, of these features, all of the features we should need to extract content from SNOMED CT. Uh, it also supports a range of definition types for concepts. So we have a range of settings and investigations into what is considered as redundant in a definition based on the semantics provided by description logics and represented in OWL. And it's adaptable to different notions of definition. So if uh, at the moment we're focused on authoring an NNF, since these provide the full semantics we need, um, but of course you can choose uh, to focus on different notions of redundancy with respect to the expressive language features covered there. This tool um, in of itself has been applied uh, as a standalone um, tool to several successful cases so far. So we've used it in the quality assurance, uh, examining the modeling um, using expressive language features in SNOMED CT. So for example, reflexive and transitive relationships. Uh, it's increased the understanding of what the authoring and NNF definitions are. So by investigating the definitions produced, uh, the understanding of what these truly represent has increased. And we've used it to inspect the most expressive content being developed. So uh, the new anatomy hierarchy that's currently under development uses many of these expressive language features. And until now, it's um, not been possible to compute consistent definitions for this, this hierarchy. Uh, but this prototype now um, does compute these definitions. Uh, so we can investigate the modeling of that hierarchy and uh, give feedback to modelers that they can then use uh, to update it as they see fit. So the quality assurance example, um, as mentioned, we have applied it to a quality assurance case, um, and this had an effect on the substance hierarchy currently in SNOMED CT. So the new gen definition generation method was used to examine the use of reflexivity and transitivity um, in this hierarchy. And we found um, some modeling issues uh, that modelers identified as, as uh, uh, issues with the modeling um, in the substance hierarchy by examining these definitions. So for example, uh, flumezanil 18F um, was one of the problematic substances, and it was found that this it was both a type of flumezanil and also a modification of flumezanil. And the reason behind this is because the is modification of attribute is a reflexive attribute. So that means each entity is related to itself under this relationship. Um, so this, this was found to be an, an, an undesired consequence of this modeling. So using this, this feedback, um, the modeling of 13 concepts in the substance hierarchy has already been updated, and that is now part of the current number CT release. So onto the full subontology extraction task, which this definition generation process is used in. As mentioned before, we have focus concepts, uh, which are the scope of the domain, and they can be spec specified in a list in any format. So these can use, for example, ref sets. Uh, they could use a, a list provided by a user. Uh, they can use all of the descendants of a given class and so on. So this can be any list of concepts. And the definitions provided for these concepts will be in authoring form. And as mentioned, this is to preserve the full semantics of the focus concepts with respect to the source, so Sonoma CT, in a concise and standardized manner. We also have these supporting concepts and attributes. Uh, and as mentioned, these are required in the definitions of the focus concepts. And these are automatically brought into the subontologies we produce when necessary. So if we produce a definition, we will bring in the supporting classes we need. But this raises the question of how much information we actually need about these supporting classes. If we just uh, introduce all of the information about every supporting class, then we bring in additional definitions, which brings additional concepts, which brings additional definitions, and so on, until eventually the subontology is so large um, that the conciseness is lost. Um, so the, the aim here is to only extract what is needed to preserve the semantics of the focus concepts. So this uh, separation between focus and supporting concepts gives us a guiding principle to ensure that only relevant necessary information is brought into the subontology. So the solution we've, um, we're using is to incrementally compute and add supporting concept definitions only when necessary. And this is based on the semantics um, needed to represent the meaning of focus concepts. And the expansion of the subontology signature is based upon those focus concepts. So this gives us a very principled way to restrict the expansion of subontologies. And we also mentioned that um, subontologies will be produced in not only OWL formats, but also RF2 formats. And the question behind this may be why? Why are we so interested and eager to do this? Um, well, subontologies should be compatible with existing tooling. Uh, some of the main benefits we pointed out there were updates, um, sharing information, um, distributing information. And if it's not compatible with the existing tooling, all of this becomes more difficult. So um, 
we have sub ontologies compatible with all the tools that are available, which makes them more familiar to users of SNOMED CT also. And one example would be viewing sub ontologies in the SNOMED CT browser. So for users familiar with that format, they can browse sub ontologies in the same way that they would SNOMED CT itself. Uh, how is this done? Well, RF2 format requires uh, some different things than, than the OWL format. And one of these is the inferred relationship file, um, which is given in necessary normal form. Um, so this gives all of the uh, inferred parent and attribute value relationships for each of the entities in the subontology. And we use the definition generation approach uh, to compute those required NNFs. Um, so this produces the re-inferred relationship file um, or re-inferred relationships, which we then pass to an OWL to RF2 conversion tool that we've also developed uh, with the help of Kai, um, who's on our working group. Um, and we've uh, now got a, a way to produce RF2 files covering the scope of the subontology. So we end up with um, RF2 files covering the focus and supporting concepts, uh, which include fully specified names and preferred terms for those concepts, uh, our now axiom ref set file for the definitions we produce, the relationship file, which includes the inferred relationships, and so on. So we now have a way to produce these subontologies as an RF2. And to give an example of a subontology that's been extracted, we have the uh, European Renal Association and European Dialysis and Transplant Association ref set, or the ERA EDTA ref set. And this is a list of entities related specifically to renal diseases. So as mentioned before, we can use this as input to the subontology extraction algorithm. And in this case, we give this ref set as input, giving 183 focus concepts. And the output is a standalone ontology modeling information to do with renal diseases with respect to SNOMED CT. And at the bottom there, you can see summary statistics on uh, the descriptive statistics on the size of this subontology uh, with respect to the original SNOMED CT terminology. So um, you can see that there's far fewer axioms, uh, 601 axioms in total, 559 concepts, which is uh, 183 focus and 376 supporting, and 15 attributes. So this is a, an idea of the size of that subontology with respect to the original terminology. So the idea of conciseness. Um, to give an, uh, an idea of what it would look like to browse one of these, uh, we have the SNOMED CT International Edition uh, as of July 2020 loaded into the browser there. And this is just a screenshot of what you would see as a user if you were searching for a very generic uh, high-level concept like disease. Um, and you can see here that there are 4,500 or so matches for a concept like this. And as mentioned, we extract an RF2 for the subontology, which we then loaded into a browser, um, so a locally hosted browser. Um, and here you can see that the search for a high level concept like disease returns far fewer concepts now. So it returns only 97. Um, so this, and you can also see on the right hand side, clinical finding, another high level grouper concept. Um, you can see that it has far fewer children underneath. So there are only eight children necessary um, to represent the information in the ERA subontology. Um, so these include uh, findings to do with uh, say absent kidney, um, diseases in there, since naturally renal diseases will be nested underneath this. So this is uh, already, uh, as you can see, loadable into the browser. Zooming in on the taxonomy part a bit, um, on the left, we have the full taxonomy view for the full SNOMED CT terminology. And as you can see there, all of the hierarchies um, represented by their top level group of concepts like body structure, clinical finding, event, organism, and so on. And on the right hand side, you can see the taxonomy view at the highest level for the ERA subontology. So you can already see that a lot of these sub hierarchies are not necessary to represent the uh, information in the ERA subontology. And it only uses the information it needs to represent the semantics of those focus classes. So it already uses fewer um, sub hierarchies as a result. Zooming in a bit further by expanding the clinical finding sub hierarchy, uh, you can see that SNOMED CT's um, clinical finding subhierarchy is, is extensive. It has a lot of entities there that are related to many other clinical findings outside of renal diseases. And on the right hand side, you can see that all of these that are not related to um, the ERA focus concepts are uh, excluded um, and only used when necessary uh, to preserve those semantics. So by automatically dragging in the supporting classes it needs, um, it's got a complete set of clinical findings that it needs to represent this domain, which turns out to be much smaller than the full terminology. An example of a definition. So we mentioned before that we um, are computing definitions for these uh, focus classes and where necessary supporting classes. 
Um, so we have a, an example of a definition of a um, of a concept here, acute renal failure syndrome. Um, so we have on the left hand side that concept, and on the right hand side we have the definition as presented in the July 2020 release of SNOMED CT. Um, and you can probably notice here that this is not in authoring form. Um, so it's been the, the choice has been made to model this in a different way. Um, however, when we extract a subontology, um, irrespective of the form presented in the source, we can still extract the definition that is needed to preserve those semantics to do with acute renal failure syndrome in the authoring form. And the difference you can see here is that um, rather than having a named class and the primitive, sorry, named concept and primitive concept, um, we now have the collection of all of the non redundant attribute value relationships automatically computed as part of the subontology extraction process. So, as mentioned, this is not designed to constrain the forms taken by users in representing their content. It is meant to preserve the semantics that is needed to represent the domain and the true meanings behind each entity in a concise manner. So, there's no imposing upon what form the source takes. Uh, so another, another example, uh, taking a bit of a larger subontology, we uh, built our, a, a custom list of uh, medicinal products. So we took the concept uh, medicinal product and took all non-primitive descendants of that concept in SNOMED CT, which left us with uh, around 10,000 focus concepts. And the output of the subontology extraction process here was a standalone ontology about those medicinal products with respect to SNOMED CT. And again, you can see the uh, descriptive characteristics of these uh, of the subontology as compared to the original. This one is larger than the previous, but still much smaller than the overall terminology. You have 16,000 16, or so axioms, 14,000 or so concepts. Uh, in this case, more of those are focus and fewer of them are supporting, which again, only the necessary supporting classes uh, or concepts are brought into this subontology during the extraction process. So there's no need to bring in all of the unnecessary ones. So if it is the case that we only need a small portion of supporting concepts, then that is what, uh, what will be included. And here there are 22 attributes as opposed to the original um, full set of attributes. So having a look at the browser again, um, this time we show the taxonomy view on the left-hand side. So you can see as a, as a user, if you were browsing, you can view the full stated taxonomy of the subontology uh, as loaded into a browser. And on the right-hand side, we have an example of a definition in authoring form for a named concept. In this case, a product containing aloe and benzoin. Apologies for pronunciation if that uh, is not correct. But yeah, that's that's an example of how you would browse a subontology as a user. So this is the benefit of the of the extraction process for uh, the RF2 format as well. Uh, we don't expect people to have to navigate our ontologies directly uh, necessarily if they don't wish to. Zooming in on the taxonomy view again. Um, so we have the full taxonomy on the left um, where the pharmaceutical and biologic product uh, sub hierarchy has been uh, expanded. And on the right hand side, we have the same expansion for the medicinal products sub ontology. And as you can see, the pharmaceutical and biologic product uh, sub hierarchy includes medicinal products here. So if you expand that out, you'll find a collection of all of those uh, medicinal products that were needed. So the focus concepts and the supporting concepts needed. Um, and it's much smaller than the original uh, taxonomy view again. So there's a lot of information that is just not needed to represent these medicinal products. So we get a truly concise. Uh, while still being meaningful uh, view. So this um, is all well and good, but the question is how do we uh, truly know that a subontology is a valid subontology? Uh, what are the guiding principles that we, we know must be satisfied for the solution to be correct in a sense? So we have two um, primary guiding principles behind this content extraction. One is that we should preserve the semantics of the focus concepts. So as mentioned, we want to give our domain of, of, uh, of application um, a scope defined by focus concepts. And the semantics of these should be the same in the subontology as they are in the source yeah. ontology. So it shouldn't be the case that we have different meanings represented in each case. And the structure should also be similar so that users can tell um, what am I looking at in this subontology. Uh, we should also preserve the transitive closure um, or the hierarchical uh, relationships for all of the concepts within the subontology. So if we use supporting classes that we don't need to fully define, it should still be the case that they are represented within the hierarchy of concepts in that subontology. And this should be a subset of the hierarchy in the original SNOMED CT. And in this way, we know that the, the structure of the information or the, the, the meaning behind it is still preserved 
um, as far as necessary. So we don't begin rearranging the position of concepts and changing their, their um, meaning with relation to each other. Uh, testing is obviously a huge part of all this, and we um, want to thoroughly test and have been thoroughly testing uh, both the definition generation procedures and the procedures for computing the full subontology. So for the definition generation, we've been testing this against the SNOMED International Toolkit, um, which computes the uh, authoring and NNF forms for uh, the concepts in SNOMED CT. And we've been comparing the results of the NNFs to those computed by the toolkit. So we're checking, we, we were checking that the, these were correct, uh, since these are obviously necessary uh, to represent the semantics. Um, and we were using a range of example cases, both for definition generation, and we've been using many examples for subontology generation, uh, using a variety of different language features. So each language feature brings its own challenges in representing definitions, and we examine these closely to see whether or not these definitions are truly represented correctly within subontologies. And this can be done by um, examination against expected cases, like in the cases of NNF definitions, and it can also be uh, and has been done um, by passing these to modelers, um, for example, Young, um, to check are we getting what we roughly expect, and then we can proceed from there and continue to um, get a truly correct answer out of these. Um, we're also developing and uh, have been using uh, methods for testing equivalents of concepts. So as we said, we want the semantics of focus concepts to be the same in the subontology as the source. So we can check equivalence of these um, subontology classes or concepts uh, with respect to their representation in the original source ontology. And one way we'll be exploring doing this further is to use a logical difference comparison. So to find the set of logical consequences um, within the signature of the subontology compared to the original ontology and ensure that there is no difference between the consequences with respect to the focus concepts between those two. So there's a lot of testing to be done on this, and it's been a large part of, of this development process, and obviously is always going to be an ongoing part of that. So I'll uh, now hand you over to uh, to Yong, who will give us the uh, closing remarks and some applications. Thanks, Warren. Uh, my name is Yong Shengao. Uh, in this presentation, Warren has demonstrated uh, applications for specialist domains, such as uh, renal medicine, dentistry, and medicinal products. Uh, we could uh, even produce SNOMED CT ontologies for each specialties, which uh, preserves the model and the semantic if that is needed. And uh, it's also possible uh, multiple sub-ontologies could be combined together for an application. For example, we could extract the all medicinal products from the US, UK, Canada, Australia extensions and uh, combine them uh, together as a single uh, ontology for medicinal product. So that covers the full range of the global needs of medicinal product. Uh, another subject area really is about uh, terminology development and distribution as uh, what we do in uh, SUMED International. Uh, we could extract a sub-ontology for concept model, design, and debugging of the problems. Uh, currently, it is hard to share the content as well uh, across the different extensions. Uh, content has to be promoted to the international core to enable sharing among extensions. It is possible that uh, content in an extension, such as US extension, is useful for the UK. Then the extent content can be extracted as a sub-ontology and imported uh, as part of the UK edition. So that is a, a more flexible, uh, like a configuration, uh, how the content should be uh, managed. And the content promotion could also be treated as the extraction of content from the extensions and the import into the international core module. So there are uh, also different possibilities we are exploring. And we would like your suggestions and the feedback on other potential applications. And we also will set up a server to upload sub-ontologies for investigation of structures and content coverage with respect to different use cases. Um, please let us know if you have uh, any use cases uh, or your colleague has any use cases want to test it out. So in summary, uh, it really is a great opportunity uh, to collaborate with the University of Manchester to utilize their leading research for our applications. And the project has uh, developed an algorithm and a prototype software for smart city content extraction and uh, 
as explained uh, by Warren in this uh, presentation. So the outcome uh, conforms to the OWL and RF standard. So we can easily transform between these two formats to support uh, uh, different implementations and the content sharing. And regard sharing, as uh, Warren mentioned early, it is still under investigation for how, to, for example, how to integrate sub-ontology into a target ontology. We are still working on uh, how to handle in, uh, enhanced uh, logical features such as uh, reflexive, reflexive property and uh, options for inferred relationship file. For example, what uh, uh, inferred relationships should be included for all or part of relationships in anatomy. So how to contact us, <clears throat> please feel free uh, to reach out by email or visit our confluence page for this project. Uh, many thanks uh, for your attention and uh, over to you Susie for the QA session. Thank you, uh, Dr. Schmidt, uh, Warren and Yang. That was most excellent. Um, okay, so we have reached the Q&A portion. Um, and so go ahead and please enter your questions into the Q&A box. Um, you will, I guess, depending on um, how you're viewing this, it'll usually be uh, a Q&A um, dialogue bubble at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and put your questions in there. It looks like we already have one question coming in and maybe another one coming in. First one from Philip Van Dam. Um, how is your approach slash method different or related to the syntactic locally locality module extractor included in the OWL API? Uh, thank you, uh, Philip, uh, for that uh, question. Um, Modularization is one of several ontology extraction methodologies that uh, are available and it is uh, used quite successfully in combination with uh, lots of tools, reasoners, uh, alignment tools. We have uh, uh, combined it with uh, our uh, forgetting uh, tools. Um, what modularization will do is it will um, return a proper sub-ontology uh, that consists of the stated axioms in the uh, source ontology. Um, and the guarantee is that uh, all inferred relationships involving the focus concepts uh, can be computed from these uh, stated axioms. So what is returned is a slice of the uh, ontology. Um, and uh, this slice can be quite large and uh, our evaluation and that of others has shown that the uh, precision is uh, quite low. So for the purposes of what we are trying to do here, uh, computing um, sub-ontology um, that can be used for the purposes of uh, content development, content understanding, um, modules are quite large, uh, that they are too large. Uh, and uh, what we've shown here with um, our uh, tool is that it is possible to compute uh, sub-ontologies that don't need to be, that don't need to consist of uh, only axioms uh, stated in the ontology, um, but uh, um, um, are in a form that uh, um, adheres to the uh, SNOMED CT uh, guidelines. So with the sub-ontology, we want a, a compact representation of just the right amount of information that captures uh, what information there is about the focus concepts uh, in the ontology. So in our sub-ontologies, um, uh, a lot more information will be omitted. Uh, everything, we aim to omit everything that is uh, unnecessary uh, from the sub-ontology. Uh, so as a result, our sub-ontologies are significantly uh, smaller and uh, more useful um, than modules for, for the purposes that uh, we are targeting here. Great, thanks. Um, next question. As uh, Dr. Yongsheng Gao indicated, this could be used to move content from the US edition to UK extension without going through the international edition as an intermediate step. How would you control module dependencies, especially surrounding effective time in this workflow? Thanks, Jan, for the question. Uh, yes, we do need to work out how do we make this uh, control the 
uh, module dependency and uh, effective time, the version control, um, because this is a critical. And I think in principle that this would be very similar to uh, a national extension, including the core module as part of for release. For example, in the US, <clears throat> you include the international core module as part of release. In the UK, it's a similar. But the UK, uh, UK edition could include some portion content from the US. So the module ID should, could still be preserved and the effective time is the uh, same as uh, in the US edition and to be part of uh, UK re uh, release. And that means uh, <clears throat> the ownership, the content has been authored, still owned by the US edition uh, because you control the quality and however, uh, benefit definitely is obvious for the UK side because they don't need to do any work. They can just use your concept and the model in their release. Uh, I think the further work definitely needed in this area, how to make this a smooth uh, process and the control for all the dependencies. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that question, John. I was, I was wondering about a effective time going back and forth between the two. So that was great, thank you. Um, uh, John Schneider has another question. Has any thought been given to potential adverse impact on new content requests by creating a series of sub-ontologies? While I understand the need for sub-ontologies to increase speed of search and providing new concepts for clinicians to search through a given specific clinical domain, it seems like there could be some issues with clinicians not researching the full ontology before requesting new content. Yeah, uh, this, uh, thanks, John. This is quite a good question. Think about uh, even we use uh, uh, Cinema CT in the US extension that cover the content in uh, international core release. In addition, that UK, uh, US uh, administrative and other contents are covered, but that may not still be sufficient. And when we search, we thought we are searching the entire Cinema CT. Actually, it's not. And the entire Cinema CT, or oh, let's say, a global smart city really should also cover the content from uh, Australia, UK, Canada, uh, uh, Malaysia, the all different countries. So those actually really is the uh, entire smart city, global one. And the search, if we want to be comprehensive, that, that is the space we need to search. So that means we don't really need to uh, create a new concept actually redundant has already exist uh, in smart city. And the, the switch between the uh, tight controlled sub-ontology or the ref set uh, compared to the searching space is always a challenge. Uh, how that should be implemented in the software and the applications uh, uh, to provide a kind of full space. People can find things in the global my city, but also have constraints of certain things uh, actually is controlled. Uh, as a controller uh, vocabulary, as I always say, uh, they should only use this list of for concept and for their data entry. So I think there's a balance and uh, options that need to be explored. And I'm wondering also with regards to um, uh, the original submitter not, um, or needing a little bit more training um, prior to submitting for new content so they know where to search for that full content um, before doing the original, uh, before doing the submission yeah. and or that um, frontline um, author or request uh, receiver doing some uh, communication and um, tutoring of the submitter so that yeah. Yeah, things That's don't. That's right, yeah. yeah. I think also some application even talk about a slider. Basically, you can search within the sub-ontology or the red yeah. set, that yeah. constraint. You can have sliders search global so you can find the things you want, yeah. It's a constant education uh, <laughs> moment for all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, okay. And let me see if there are any, any last um, questions. Um, I'm going to, oh, can I just get one more? Sorry, um, oh, sorry about that. One more question. Um, the stated relationship RF2 file stopped being updated in 2019. 
can the OWL to RF2 utility be used to recreate that file so that it is available for use within relational database structures? Uh, yes, I think this is uh, already developed by the tech team, Kai, and the tech team, they developed the tooling. Uh, so the Snow L2 kit, so that will uh, generate the uh, RF2 file based on the OWL. And also the work has been done by the tech team uh, based on the past release, release uh, to generate the OWL uh, expression ref set. So that uh, both direction actually can be covered uh, by the conversion to developed by Smith International. All right, thank you. And um, sorry, I am not able to show my screen right now. Okay, <laughs> a little bit of technical difficulties here, but you guys get it. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, first one back in, uh, into the new year and a little rusty here, clearly. So uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Schmidt. Um, Warren and Yong for that excellent presentation. And thank you to all of you for attending today and um, those really great questions. Um, so if anyone has any further questions, um, Yong shared their emails, but if you uh, didn't get those, my email is posted here. You guys are more than welcome to um, message me, sro at snomed.org or info at snomed.org. And um, either I can answer you directly or forward your email as appropriate. Um, as I mentioned, we have, um, we did record today's presentation and the slides will be available later this week. And if you wanted to join the SNOMED CT research reference group, please just email me. Otherwise, I will see you next month and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Susie. Thank you for having us. And thank you to everybody who came along and asked questions. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Very much appreciated.